All right, so in this mini course, we're going to be taking a look at how we can go ahead and essentially use Tailwind in our emails using Maisel. So we're going to go ahead and create a new Laravel app, and we're going to call this Tailwind Mail. And we're going to use, let's just say, view as a starter kit. doesn't really matter. We're not really going to be using any front end except for fiddling with the UI of the emails. So we can just use Laravel's built-in authentication and use PEST here. So in this case, we're going ahead and we're just installing a new application. And we can go ahead and open up a new repository. And in here, we can go ahead into select Laravel PERT. And we can select Laravel mail, Tailwind Mail. So the first thing we want to go ahead and do is we want to go ahead and get mazel.com where we can go ahead and install this. This works for other applications as well. So the reason why you won't do, wouldn't want to include Tailwind into it is because the CSS file will be huge and it will take a long time to load. So what it does here is it generates a specific CSS using the template. It then outputs that into a build file and then you can copy and paste that build file into your uh, Laravel application. So this is actually a separate project you're running, but I like to have this inside my root project in Laravel here. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to say npx create mesel, and I'm going to call this emails. And in this case, we're just going to have a default starter kit. We're going to install the dependencies, and we're just going to wait for this to go through, and it should then work. So you can see this is already gone ahead and created a folder here. So if we go ahead and take a look at this now. You can see we have different things in here. We have a package.json file, because this is a server we're running using Node.js. Um, and we're using Maisel, uh serve, which we can use npm run dev as a shorthand command for this. And then we use build to build the image template, and it will then go into a folder in here called build. So if you go ahead and say npm run dev, if we cd into this first, Let's go ahead and go to localhost 3000. You can see we have this transactional email here. And this is essentially all Tailwind. We can go ahead and modify this whatever way we want. So it's really easy that way. So in here, you can see we have some configuration we can add up here. But we can also just go ahead and add things in here. So if you had a logo, you could go ahead and change this here. And there's a logo file inside the images folder where you can add images you add into your email. Now, obviously, you have to include that using a URL or whatever you want to use in the case of sending an email over to a user, uh, just like you would normally. You can change this URL in here, uh, and it's just regular Tailwind, really. So there's a few components here, for example, X divider. So in that case, we have um, the divider component, and you can see it's just a bunch of JavaScript with some um, HTML, and it goes ahead and essentially uh, renders this here. So you can go ahead and customize this in here, for example, the styling of it or whatever you want to do. Uh, we also have a spacer and a refill and a button, and we can create more components like this in the future. This is just a standard components it comes with, and it's really up to you how you want to proceed with that. We also have a layout file, which is the uh, HTML file. So in here, this will always be the one we use when we build something. So we'll, for example, be if you want to change the language to English, uh, from English to French, you can do that easily here. You can also change the default font and all the other things you fancy going ahead and taking a look at manipulating in this case. Uh, and again, we have like the page, the title here, for example, and as you can see, this is essentially how it looks like. So if we go ahead in here and we say paste pre header, should be able to see something here. Transactional email template. Perfect. So we can use these variables in here and it will just render that text out. This is uh, useful in some cases, depends on what you're using. Now, in this case, if you're happy with this email, uh, you could go ahead and say uh, see the emails, npm run build. And you will go ahead and see we have build production where we have a transactional.html. Now, obviously, you would have to go ahead and include the path to the logo here in order for it to load, because at the moment it would just go to this path here. That won't really work. Uh, in this case, we would need to move the file ahead. But we can essentially copy and paste this and head in and make a new email in the application here called with a markdown. So inside a uh, test mail, let's go ahead and find that inside resources, views, mail, test mail. 
copy and paste this in. It basically will then be able to be triggered if we go ahead and say PHP Allison Tinker and we then dispatch the email or we create a button to dispatch it. Uh, now, in this case, we would need to set up mail trap as well if you want to test it out. But essentially, it, it works pretty much the same way, except you wouldn't use play components. But if you wanted to, say, for example, to say user name, you could go ahead and pass that through like you would normally would in an application. So you have this test mail here where you can go ahead and pass the variables through like you normally would. So you can obviously use the variables in here. You could use play components, but um, it's not really the point of it. Uh, you can go ahead and change um, this to, for example, be config app name. And you could go ahead and change this to be config app UL. And you can see there's a CLI built in for it as well that you can go ahead and use. Uh, so you can go ahead and say, for example, Maisel new for a new uh, template. Um, we can configure all sort of CSS in here, such as perch, inline, um, and so on. There's also, in this case, the opportunity to obviously change the components folder and uh, change the file extension. There's a lot more we can do in here. Um, but essentially, uh, we could go ahead and add different variables, just conditions in here. For example, in production, you may have a different one versus not being in production. Um, the blade inspired, uh, component here, for example, is useful for one off. So in this case, this would be page or title. So if you wanted to go ahead and have that in template, we can go ahead in here and say, hello. Let's see how that renders. And then let's copy and paste this into test email. There we go. So now we have this essentially here where we can go ahead and use um, variables in here super easily instead. So this is how you would basically go ahead and add a blade variable into your application. Um, so um, if you go ahead and use uh, something like um, without it, then it would just you know, use the one we have from the application. So it's basically a really easy way to do it. So it would look like this in here because obviously it doesn't know what's going on and that's fine. Um, but when you render it, it will be easier to just copy and paste in. There's a lot more advanced things we can use though for this, but I think the key thing is just showing you how we can quickly implement this into a application and have an email like this being printed out. And it's really neat with this overview here where we can go ahead and see all the emails here, view the tre templates, and then afterwards um, add them into our application. So thank you very much for watching this video. Please hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.